We have clients that reach out to us that have asked, hey, what does it take to find a lot and then build a custom home? And so here we are today on day one of our new series that is building a custom home. And we have been joined with BBG Construction. Ben Davis has so graciously decided to actually walk us through building one of his custom homes here in Chatham Hills. Chatham Hills is in Westfield, Indiana and is conveniently located near US 31. It features a championship golf course designed by legendary golfer Pete Dye, a clubhouse which features an indoor-outdoor swimming pool, a fitness center, a gymnasium for playing, a game of hoops, dining, and more. There's even hiking and biking trails in the neighborhood that connect to the Monon Trail. You guys, I'm so excited about this series, learning about building a custom home. Bend inside, let's head inside and chat with him about the steps it takes to build a new custom home. Okay, Ben. Yes. How does someone get connected with you if they are wanting to build a custom home? There's three ways that we most people come to us. Okay. It's they are driving through a neighborhood, they see one of our houses under construction, and they call us and say, hey, is that available? Okay. And we would either say no, or we turn that into, hey, no, but we could build one over here. So that's number one. Okay. Number two, another one is realtors. I'd say how much of your business actually comes from real estate agents? Probably a okay. third. Oh, yeah, good. Maybe a third. That's a good amount. Third, probably a third of the projects we're doing are probably, I think yeah, that's probably, yeah. That's I think good. that's positive. Okay. Yep. And so then the third part is like what we're in today, our, this home show we did for Homorama. This is another opportunity where we show up our product and we get leads from that. So I would almost say it's probably a third, a third, a third. Those are the three ways. Okay. And I would say the projects we're doing is probably, hey, driving around seeing us, realtors or from the show. So what is really the first step when someone reaches out to you and says they want to build a custom home? Normally of those three things we just talked about, two thirds of that, they've seen a product. They've seen one of our houses. Okay. So we then narrow it down to two options. They say, okay, did you like that house? Do you want us to re, you know, duplicate that? Right. Or do you want to go down the route of full on custom? This house is gonna be unique only to your needs or your wants, right? Right, right. okay. So if we go those two routes, and, it's, and I would say that route, it's 50-50. We have probably half the projects we're doing, we're building a house or that is similar to maybe another house we've built. But I would say we've never built the same house twice. Oh. We've always tweaked houses somehow. Okay. So it's never the exact same. And then we have the other route where it's total custom. It's super unique either because of the client or it's super unique to the lot or the building site that they're on. That like that house. They find the site and then say, hey, we want you to build on that location. Right. Like this house here we're in, this Homerama house, this, this beautiful walkout, the way it's laid out, it's gonna be hard to build this walkout like this. Somewhere else. Could be. Right. Yeah, we'll have to tweak it. We usually talk about their style. Most people don't know what that style is, so we say, hey, bring some pictures, ideas. ideas. And then we- Pinterest. Pinterest, we, we like okay. Pinterest boards. Bring that, because then we say, oh, that's what you mean. Okay, great. Okay. Then another thing we usually talk about is, hey, what's your budget? Where are you at? Hey, are we building you a million dollar house? We're building you a $5 million house. Right, okay. Um, and that even to a certain extent, when talking about budget, do you talk about overages and things that they need to address of like when they go to their, if they're paying cash, right. they're paying cash. If they're doing a loan, okay, here are the things that we need to make sure that we talk about to be prepared with the lender. Right. So. I would say right now it's probably 50, 50 or 75, 25% is like 75% of people are doing some type of financing. We do have a lot of people just paying cash. Okay. So on the financing side, there's a few banks we work with because builders have to be approved by the banks just as much as the homeowner does. Good to know. So yeah. Um, okay. And a lot of time we're doing these one-time closes where you're closing on the lot and you're closing on the construction loan all at once. Okay. And then that sets up a draw system. Right. For the builder and we get draws along the way. So usually, you know, for viewers sake, typically a construction loan is 20% down. I would agree. Yep. And then you're pulling from that full amount. So you've established, this is actually after the first appointment, right? They've yes, met with the lender, on, right. it is later. I know we jumped a little ahead, but that's where they're determining what that amount is and then you're pulling a draw from that. Yeah, ev time. every bank's a little different, but it's pretty much, call it major events that normally draws are being okay. asked nice. for the bank, like foundation, framing, okay. stuff like that. Okay, so what are some of those potential costs mm -hmm. that they're gonna have? Right. 
So there's the lot up front, okay. um, which could vary, depends on where it's at, whatever the situation right. is. And that could be sometimes they already own the lot like we talked about before. Oh yeah, yeah right. So. Then I always call it like the sticks and bricks. There's the sticks and bricks that, you know, two by fours, the drywall. Right. right. And then there's the finishes, the stuff that could, um, kitchen cabinets, the flooring where there's cabinets that are this price, so there's cabinets that are this price. So let's talk about that overage, right? Because to a certain extent, I, clients will call us uh -huh. and say, hey, we want to build a million dollar house. Yep. And they say, and they ask me how much they need mm -hmm. to take out for a loan, right, let's right. say. And I, my instinct has always been 10 to 20%. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? I would. I mean, we have clients that are, we're building custom homes, but they still have a pretty tight budget right and we try to work with that as you know I call it the sticks and bricks there are certain things that hey we got to frame this house we got to right. put the drywall up we got to right. do that right now there's ways we could save money or spend extra there's always ways to spend extra right but I know how to spend extra. so like along the way you. the process of building like especially right now everybody's probably heard about lumber it's been right. crazy yes so you know you bid the house here call it in January well I'm not if we're rolling along well, I may not get against the lumber until March or April so it okay. could go up right I call that a sticks and bricks cost. I can't do anything. You can't change that. No. And so we always put a contingency fund in our bids to help guide you know, okay, manage perfect. that. Right. But But then there's me who walks in and says, You gave me a quote and or uh, right. for those cabinets, but I saw this picture on Pinterest yes. and I want to change my cabinets yes. to this. Yes. That's what we're that's where I feel like I say that ten to twenty. Yes, definitely along the way. There are ways that we'll show them, hey, flooring or cabinets. <laughs> and can change it could change how long does it take from that first conversation to then breaking ground so a house that we're tweaking let's call that the design phase from the first time we meet to tweaking the design okay. to maybe we're breaking ground as three or four months um or if you go the other route of like full-on custom and we're you know plans from scratch that could take more like six eight months okay because the design phase will be longer it could be three to four or five months of design of back and forth, making right. tweaks and changes and all that. And that, that probably that. also depends on who's helping with the design. Mm -hmm. I know we talked at one point about there's, you know, four people that kind of the customer will talk to or have yep. conversations with. Can you tell us what who those four people are? Yeah, so in my group here of organization, we call it a boot, or a boutique builder, so just four of us. Okay. There's me, owner, builder, guy on the job site. Taking all the calls a lot of calls <laughs> okay but uh so the but we've uh we've just hired someone to help okay. manage some of those calls so yeah. we have a called a office manager that helps with the communications of what's going on on the job site okay. translating that to the homeowner because since i'm on the job site all every day sometimes that gets behind so she's been great to help like hey this is what happened today right. Da -da -da. right or this is what's going to happen okay then I have a full-time house designer that designs all our houses. Okay. And I also have a full-time, well, more, she's more part-time interior designer that helps with all the selections. Okay. Like going to pick out the cabinets and the fixtures and the lighting. Okay. Um, I used to do that, but just don't have the time. Okay, so she specializes it. So that's part of in between the first meeting and or breaking ground, the customer is right. meeting with the designer yep. and going through all yep. of those things, meeting at a cabinet store, yep. talking about the cabinets and the fixtures right. and all of that. Okay. Yeah, so it's first first step would be coming up with the house plans, okay. doing all that. Once we tweak that, have the rooms laid out, what we want it to look like, then we go to step two of, hey, then let's go to actually go pick out brick. Let's go pick out the cabinet, stuff like that. Okay. Yep. You mentioned these. Yes. Can you tell us what these are oh. and kind of walk through them for us? Yeah, house plans. Like the first couple pages here you'll see is like um, front view, back view, left view, right view. Okay. Kind of shows, hey, roof pitches, window sizes, siding, brick, stone, what we're going to do on the house. Okay. And then after that, it's usually the uh, foundation, like what's going to be in the house in the, you know, the basement area. Right. Okay. So then, then um, so this is more the basement layout of like the walls, what it would look like. Okay. And then it has, the, this is a ranch that we're building. So it shows the first floor. I would say, I can't think of one. We have not done a first floor master. I mean, we like to, I think that's important. Pretty much all of them. Yeah, they yeah. should, if you're not, then. Right. Is that a custom thing? Or do you think that from a overall, more and more people are wanting master on the mains? I want your opinion. Yeah, my opinion is it's the most, 
it's the smartest thing to do. I 100% agree. I mean, if and I have had people that, and I don't think I ended up building for them, that wanted a master on the second floor. Is like, let me, I'm, I'm right I, for on your side. Like when someone tries right. to sell this, first floor master is the smartest thing ever. Well, you can you, you grow in I your. I think home you can or, last right, in your yeah. home a lot longer right. if you're a master on the main. Correct. Yes. And 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 when you're talking this price point, especially right, anything over about a million. Really, some people, like it's their forever home. Yeah, right. So, yeah, okay. Yes. Do you see where people will say, like I want the master on that side and I want the additional bedrooms on the other side? Yes. Because I noticed that is kind of the case here, right? Yeah. Even in this house we're here, we have the master over here on the left. We got and another, additional. yeah, and we did this on this house plan. We have like a master side and then we have everything else. Else, yeah. okay. Then what and then after got? that, it's just generic. Oh, just the pictures roof. of the roof. Yeah. Okay. And I guess the final, we can also, in all our plans, we can do them in color where you can kind of see the inside or the outside of hay. And it's, it's more 3D. More 3D, yeah. Because yeah. this is more 2D flat. Right. This gives a little more dimension to it. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so now that you've shown this to the clients, now it's the point of like, okay, yes, permits have been pulled. We're going to start at the lot. Uh -huh. So what can we expect to see on episode two right. of like the next steps? Right, so the first next step after designs are done, um, permits are pulled, all the finance, all that, then we're digging a basement. Okay. And we'll see that next time where we'll go up the side. You'll see guys moving dirt. And then after they move the dirt, they start putting the walls up. Walls and, and stuff. Frame and walls. Awesome. And I can't wait. Yeah, it's it's going to be fun. Yeah. It's going to be exciting. So, well, I'm excited. I can't wait to see the whole process and see the end result of this specific yeah. house. Yeah. Um, and thank you for meeting with us yeah, again cool. today. Cool. Thank awesome. you, Ben. Thanks Appreciate out. it. Thanks for tuning in to our first episode on the steps to build a custom home. Here with BBG Construction and Ben Davis. Make sure to like and subscribe because the next Next time we're going to be out on the lot where they're going to be digging the foundation and the basement and then we'll catch you next time.